everybody. Thank you, Carol, and thank you, Pedro, for having me today. Um, I'm just going to start off with apologizing if you guys hear anything loud. I am only a mile and a half from uh, the U.S. Capitol here in Washington, D.C., so we have lots of helicopters and crazy things happening, so uh, apologies ahead of time. Um, uh, as, as Carol said, I am the Director of Analysis here at CINTOC, the Center on Illicit Networks and Transnational Organized Crime. Uh, as part of CINTOC, we have a program called the Alliance to Counter Crime Online. Um, if you guys were here last week, or I think also today, later today, and um, next week, there are several members of the Alliance to Counter Crime Online presenting their work. Um, I'm going to take an opportunity today to sort of talk broadly about what the Alliance does and sort of the um, similarities we see across, across different crime sectors. Um, so if I go ahead and let's see, start. So who we are. The Alliance to Counter Crime Online is a program of CINTOC. Um, we're a small, scrappy group of investigators uh, who are really fighting uh, for or against uh, large online tech platforms um, who are exacerbating crime that we see in archaeology, drugs, wildlife crime, and fraud. So our members really range. We have a lot of people in the wildlife space. Um, for example, CINTOC is in the wildlife space, but also Wildlife Justice Commission, Lady Freethinker, IUCN. Um, I think we also have the World Parrot Trust on here today and Oxpeckers, uh, Oceans Asia last week. Um, we also have a lot of folks in archaeology, um, Athar Project, which was on here last week, and um, lo lots of different uh, academics. Um, a lot of times people ask us at ACCO, like how do how do you use so many different experts in so many different uh, crime sectors come together to focus on one issue? And the reality is, is that while we're all experts in different fields, we all have the same common issues, which is that social media and tech platforms has, has exacerbated criminal activity in our spaces. So whether we're looking at the trafficking of rhino horn or ivory, or we're looking at the trafficking of cultural heritage goods, we're seeing a lot of similarities play out across the, uh, across the space. So today I'm going to focus a bit more on some of those similarities that we see and then how we see fixing the issue that exists here. Um, so the problem, social media platforms provide criminals and terrorists an unregulated space in which to meet, gather, and organize. Um, we see sort of what we would consider a integrated supply chain. So we see the ability to market, sell, and collect payment on these platforms. Um, pretty much the only thing we don't see is direct, usually direct um, involvement in shipping goods. Um, we also, uh, the U.S. law, the way U.S. law works for these tech platforms is it provides immunity. So while it might be illegal to do something in real life, for example, it is illegal to sell ivory or rhino horn in the United States. Um, it is not illegal for tech platforms to host it. It's not illegal for tech platforms to suggest to people, um, hey, you might be interested in this group that's buying or selling illegal activity or, or, or buying or selling parrots or buying or selling lizards or buying or selling tarantulas. Um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they all get a pass on that. They're allowed to, to connect people regardless of their interest. Um, what that has created is a, it, it's removed a pathway to justice for victims. Um, and a pathway to correcting the behavior. So here in the United States, the tech and, and, and globally, I should say also in the EU and the UK, they spend millions of dollars lobbying lawmakers to prevent regulation, um, to curb this issue in big tech. Um, ACCO really started in so many ways as group therapy. Um, we had, you know, we were at CINTOC and we were working on a uh, on the issue of ivory trade in on Facebook and we were connected to the Athar project who were working on antiquities and we were connected to Sean and Damien our colleagues um, 
in Australia and Canada who were working on human remains trafficking. And we were all kind of sitting down talking to each other and we, we all had very different pieces of the puzzle looking at how criminal activity was taking place on these platforms. But we all had the same issue, which was that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, all of these platforms were taking buyers and sellers of illicit goods and connecting them to each other at a rate that was unprecedented um, and was causing an explosion of criminal activity in our individual sectors. And so we are working across all the different crime sectors to bring change to the system, not to an individual space. Um, so types of crime that we look at, so ACCO has people who look at human trafficking. As you can see, people are sold daily across social media platforms for sex and labor. Uh, drugs, uh, in the United States, $800 million of fentanyl was sold online. And this, this statistic is actually from 2018 now. Um, 12 million child sex exploitation images passed on Facebook Messenger last year. That's 2019, actually. And what I will say about that is that is one of the highest um, tracked statistics. Um, so we probably have the best information on child exploitation because of the laws that exist here in the United States and as well as in other parts of the world. Um, the largest wildlife markets we've found are online. Um, you can buy anything from ivory and rhino horn to, you know, fish, uh, endangered fish species and fish bladders. Um, it kind of ranges the gambit. Um, we have found our, our members have tracked over 2 million active users across 100 different Facebook groups with looted, uh, looted con conflict antiquities. Um, we also have, we also have members who track online romance scams. So um, these are people, this is actually something that is becoming more and more of a problem uh, with COVID as people are at home and they're lonely and they are looking for connection. People go online and they're meeting each other. And what we have found is that there is a large market for people who uh, essentially catfish um, or pretend to be somebody they're not. And in 2019, the FBI estimated that it was $475 million in losses. Um, they'll say that that's the tip of the iceberg. So there's a massive underreporting um, by, by victims who don't wanna admit that they've been scammed or, or, or hurt in this way. So they think the problem is pro that's probably one third of the issue. Um, we also have a, we've also have a member tracking thousands of people and businesses selling fake reviews. Um, this is a bigger issue for particularly um, people buying and selling fake reviews of doctors and dentists and other groups um, that are providing consumer services. And so we have directly uh, been able to show causation between people buying and selling reviews for fake doctors and dentists that then result in malpractice and or in um, endangering people. And then uh, one of my, my favorite areas to look at, so the Sinaloa drug cartel has more than 100,000 Twitter followers globally. Um, the Mexican cartels um, and the South American cartels are actually really good at using uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to connect with their followers, but also to connect globally. And so, for example, in the Alliance to Counter Crime online, we have an expert who looks at Turkey and reached out to our expert who looks in uh, Mexico and said, hey, look, I'm seeing my um, nas Turkish nationalists who are um, causing issues here in Turkey, uh, connecting with members of cartels in Mexico and can we work across this line. So so we are seeing this global outreach between different groups. Um, so the narcos in Mexico are definitely connecting to Turkish nationalists and vice versa. And how are they doing it? They're using Facebook like everybody else. Um, so we see a lot of similarities across this. So for example, we see what we call an ad, quote unquote. So I say ad because these are not paid ads through Facebook or Instagram. These are literally people posting an advertisement on their individual page. So we see individual users use their own pages. They use their own posts. 
they use groups, private groups and secret groups, marketplaces and storefronts. And we see this across all the platforms. So for example, we will see people use their private Instagram page or their public Instagram page to direct people to a private Instagram page. Um, we will see people put a post on their public Facebook page that will direct people to a private Facebook page or a private group um, that then advertises wares or advertises um, for their illegal activity and people will connect. Um, and then, you know, it says, hey, DM me if you want to, uh, if you want to, if you're interested in buying or if you're interested in seeing these things. Um, and then people will connect using Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or Signal or Telegram. Oftentimes they'll provide payment through these platforms as well. So Facebook provides payment through Facebook Pay. Um, we also see it obviously through PayPal and Venmo and, and Cash App and things like that. But we see a lot more through Facebook Pay than people would imagine. Um, we actually had insiders tell us that for every um, 10 frauds, they see eight of them take place uh, with payment through Facebook uh, marketplace or Facebook payment apps. Um, so how it works, this is a really basic structure. I will say, so the Alliance to Counter Crime Online, we on our website, which is www.counteringcrime.org, um, we have fact sheets for each individual uh, crime sector. So we have wildlife, we have um, human trafficking, uh, CSAM, which is child um, sexual exploitation material, um, cartels, extremist groups, and each one has their own life cycle. Um, and I encourage you all to look at it, but this is the most basic one that we have, and I'm gonna walk us all through it. So the way we see it happen is that first, somebody creates a post advertising goods. Um, this usually happens on an open part of an online platform. For example, um, on Facebook, it would happen on somebody's open Facebook page or on an open group. In Instagram, it would open a, happen on an open page. In Twitter, it would be an open tweet. Um, it's a basic advertisement. So for example, we'll see pictures of ivory put up or we'll see um, a parrot or some sort of animal um, or good that is being advertised. At that point, people will start to respond and you'll start to build a community. So for example, I spent a lot of time tracking um, ivory and what we would find was that somebody would put up a photo of them with ivory rings and then people would respond to the photo of ivory rings. And from that response and say, hey, you know, those are nice or those are pretty, they would get directed into closed or secret groups. Um, in those groups, you would see a lot more open uh, advertising. So I have X amount of ivory, I have X amount of rhino horn available. Buyers will like images um, and or um, send DMs directly to the sellers. So this is an opportunity for sellers really to market their wares um, and engage directly with their buyers. We'll oftentimes see sellers and buyers negotiate for the sale. Um, we've seen this openly on you know, private and secret groups. We've also seen it um, and had undercover groups do it privately on DMs through WhatsApp or um, uh, Facebook Messenger or Telegram. Um, the buyer usually sends all of the payment or some of the payment directly through a payment service. Uh, again, I think one of our big revelations of 20 20 was how many of these payments were happening directly inside the integrated platform. So for example, people using Facebook pay directly as opposed to Venmo or PayPal. Um, finally, the seller will deliver the illegal goods. This is done a lot of times actually from through the postal service, depending on what it is. Um, and then, or sometimes they'll meet in real life. It just kind of depends. Minutes. Okay, so these are just a couple examples. Um, we have wildlife and antiquities right here. Uh, the antiquities is a private page um, that's available and the wildlife is actually an open post that is anyone can see. Um, and these are examples of tear. Whoop. 
Really quick. So really quick. So CDA 230 is the law um, that protects internet providers. So it's no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as a publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content. What that means or has been interpreted by US courts is that it removes liability from the platforms. Um, so functionally victims have no recourse and platforms have no duty to protect users. We are working inside the US right now to reform US laws and regulations regarding this. Um, we're also working with partners in the UK and Canada um, and a little bit in Australia to try to bring about legislation change or um, change in the courtrooms across those countries. Um, why we do it, our team has a deep commitment to justice. Pretty much everybody in ACCO is a volunteer. Um, we are academics, investigators, citizen investigators, and nonprofits who've come together to fix a problem that we see as some of the, amplifying some of the worst aspects of humankind. Um, we're hoping to bring industry together with law enforcement to create a better society. We're hoping to stop um, major online crime networks and make a measurable decline in online abuses and trafficking. Um, I would encourage everybody to check us out online, www.counteringcrime.org. We're always open to new members and new volunteers. Um, we do take our mission really seriously, and we hope to hold tech firms accountable in 2021. Thank you all for your time today.